I really didn't know you can make that much money from YouTube. So it just kept like doubling, you know? It's like, I just left uni and I'm making like- What your lecturers will be making? In a year. Like I'm making yearly money in a month. And it's just like, oh, oh, this is money, money, you know? Mo Vlogs, YouTuber and content creator with over 20 million followers. 21 with a Ferrari 458. Yeah. At one point it was like, you're making a Ferrari a month. Every single month I can buy a new Ferrari. You won't believe the kind of money involved at this level. Oh, I felt God. like I was printing money. Like literally, I was like, I was printing money. Mo has literally been living his best life. If I want to fly all my friends out with a private jet, all right, I have the money for it. And with all the money and fame, he thought he'd try something new. You had a milkshake bar as well, am I right? Yeah, that didn't go well. The money you're making compared to the headache of it, I thought, you know what? I'm famous. I'll just open a place. It's going to run itself. No. <laughs> But did this lifestyle bring more what he's looking for? Right now, are you happy? What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the CEO Cast, the number one podcast for showcasing business and entrepreneurship. Now today we are in Dubai once again and I'm joined by the one and only Mo Vlogs. Hello, hello, hello. What is going on Mo? Mr. Rahim. It's good to see you again. It is. This is our second podcast. This is our second one. Should the, we tell him? The, the first one never made it. The first one never made it, but I thought, you know what, we'll do it at the Rolls Royce in the back, the Lambo and the Bentley yeah. in your house. I thought, you know what, this is your environment. Exactly. The first podcast we made, Rahim was like, you know what Mo? You don't look rich and I need you to look rich for this podcast because well, no one's going to listen to you unless you have nice cars. Oh, hold, right. it, hold it, that was the second time I met you. The first time I met you was in VIP models. I think you were buying a Bugatti Diva, am I right? Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, the first time you met me, I was buying a Bugatti. Yeah. Buying a Bugatti. I went up to him and I was like, yo, check out my podcast. He was like, no, nah, I don't know you. I don't know you. I was that's like, I'll that's get you exactly what happened. I was like, you look cool, but I don't know you. <laughs> Insert the clip now. <laughs> oh, you have it on camera? Nice, nice, yeah, nice. So it's been all right. It's been a good journey so far. Again? See your cost. See your cost. Right, I'll yeah. check it out. Yeah, check it out. If you want to jump on, let me know. No, 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 yeah, no, no. go on, take him, my bro. Uh, yeah, in fact, I do because I was going through my footage the other day, and the videographer who was with me because I was recording in there, um, he he basically captured it at the moment of, oh. of me and you meeting. So I was like, oh, sick. Yeah, I got it on. I got it on video. Damn. So gonna, All right, we got I'll, exposed. I'll put that in there. <laughs> Real quick, exposed. <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, how's your day going, man? Good day so far. Yeah. Starting the day with the podcast, you know. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. So, excited. Let's see where this goes. I was goes. excited to get you on, man. Like I said to you on the last podcast, you know, your, how many YouTube subscribers have you got all together? Because so, you have several channels. You, yeah, now I have a few channels. So, obviously, everyone knows me from Mo Vlogs channel, 11 million subscribers. Yep. I also have an Arabic YouTube channel. Most people don't know. Um, that's what, six and a half million subscribers. And I have, like, a few other channels that combine maybe a million, two million subscribers on those. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's just probably say about 15 to 20 million. Yeah, exactly. 15, 20 million subscribers. Good paydays. Good paydays. <laughs> good, good money. But, uh, yeah, good money. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe and set the bell notification to all so you never miss a single episode. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, but let's let's dive it all the way back here because the first videos I had coming across from yours, like I said to you, was, you know, you driving your E-Class coupe in London. Yeah. So you were around the same hometown for me, essentially. I think you were said you're 15, London. yeah, f about 15, 20 minutes away from where I live yeah. right now. So very, very close. So let's talk about your whole upbringing. You know, you being in London, now you're in Dubai. There's yeah. a big transition there, big change. Exactly. So let's talk about that. So I was born in Dubai. Yep. But then we moved to UK to study. So I was always between Dubai, UK, Dubai, UK. So when I was in London, it was North London, yep. Enfield. Actually, like I lived like five minutes away from Yanomais. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I went there to study. Obviously, back and forth. I came back. Um. I think YouTube really started when I was moving back to Dubai after university. So obviously, I was studying, but I hated it. You know, most people do. What were you studying? I was studying maths and business. Okay. And I was like, not to brag or anything, but I was a genius. <laughs> like, <laughs> as in factual genius, you know, like GCSEs, I got like four A stars, six A's. Yeah. Um, Did a you level. do your GCSEs and everything in London or in Dubai? Uh, in London, yeah. Okay. So GCSEs, I was doing great. Like, as in like in books and like studying, I was yeah. smart, but I hated it. It wasn't for me, you know, like... Mm. I could easily memorize things, but like, what's the point? I feel like because, you know, when you know you're smart, yeah, and you're getting, pulling off the good grades and stuff, you tend to not like it as much because you know you can do it anyway. Yeah, and it's know, like, that's, that why, why do I care what A squared plus B squared is? Or, yeah. you know, like, who cares? Mm. I'm not going to go into the real world and say, hey. What's the Pythagoras theory or whatever it's What's called? the Pythagoras theory or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, who cares? <laughs> yeah. So I really hated school. Like, and I was good at maths. So then I did maths in university. Mm hmm do you know what they teach you in maths in university go on how to prove that like one plus one is two 
So it's easy stuff. No, there's 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 it. proof theories. Like okay. there's literally like that seems equations quite boring. to yeah. prove why one plus one is two. That seems quite boring. Do you know how stupid that sounds? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like I get it. Like who came up with the idea that one and one is two? But it's just it's so. Who sounds, was it? How much of union did you do? You remember? I don't remember anything. <laughs> no. Like I was always on playing like on my phone, just on my phone playing games yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. time. Best thing. Which uni did you go to then? Queen Mary. Okay, yeah, yeah I remember you saying. Shout that. out Queen, Queen Mary University. Yeah. I love you guys, but I mean, I studying isn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. So then from there. So from there, I realized I wanted to do something else. Um, I was in university. I hated my life. I was literally depressed as hell. And I was like, listen, I don't like this. I wanted to start a clothing line. Yeah. But also I was doing YouTube at the time. Oh, so you started YouTube at this point then? Yeah, I, I had a YouTube channel. I had a, yeah, at that time, that was my second YouTube channel. Because I had a gaming channel. Yep. Didn't do well. Um, then I had a vlog channel, which was just starting. I was like, you know what? Let me start vlogging. And if I can become successful enough then i'll leave university so i took a gap year from uni mm -hmm. and i said listen in this gap year if you make it you make it you're out yeah if you're you don't matrix. you're back to yeah you're <laughs> out of the matrix if you make it you're out of the matrix but if you don't you're going back inside and you deserve to stay in the matrix yeah and in that one year how well did it go for you then oh it went well yeah yeah luckily like alhamdulillah it went super well you know I what sort of content did you make in London? Like when you're vlogging, obviously, you know, because what I'm trying to say is vlogging in Dubai and vlogging in London is com two completely different things. Yeah. I can find content for days for vlogging out here in Dubai. But the second I step back to London, I don't know what to do. Because yeah. it's a mix of environment. You've got the sun out here. You've got the cars here. Um, in Enfield, you know, you wouldn't see a Rolls Royce unless you're going to Yanomais, for example. Yeah. So what were you actually vlogging back then? When I, you know, when I was in London, I was vlogging like just day-to-day -day stuff. Like it, it sounds so stupid, but like, I had rabbits. Yeah. So hey guys, I have rabbits. I'm taking them to the to the vet or something, you yeah. know? Like so yeah, so when I was in UK, I can't lie, like at that time the vlogs weren't doing good, you know? I mm -hmm. had a few hundred viewers, but there was like you said, at that time, like I wasn't focused on like how to get views. Like mm -hmm. I just knew like I enjoyed YouTube. Yep. So it's like I'm gonna just do it. So I was just like, hey guys, this is my house. I'm studying right now. So the content was shit. Genuinely, you're just a like, bad content. You, you know? made most of what you got though around you. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like you had your rabbits make content. The rabbits. Exactly. Yeah. I just took what I had around me. I knew I liked this, and I always say this to people: like, if you want to do something, you're gonna figure it out through the process. Like, you can't step into something and be the best. Yeah, There's no way. You can't suddenly pick up a football and be Ronaldo. No, no, of course. Like, not. you're gonna learn it along the way. So as long as you just enjoy it, and that's why you know all that cliche businessy stuff that everyone says oh if you enjoy it you're gonna do do what you enjoy but there's a reason people say it because when you make it you realize it's correct yeah 100 no, i agree with you so then you had gone for a full year of vlogging essentially how many subscribers did you build it up to so when i when i took my gap here i had a thousand subscribers yep which is nothing you know um for youtube anyways well, at the end of the year no no when oh, i when first started, started because okay. during university i was still making some videos yeah um, so I had a thousand when I left university, um, when I took a gap year, within like six months, I was at a hundred thousand. Oh, damn. And once I hit a hundred thousand, like I remember this every month I was getting 200,000 more. So I was That's like a hundred thousand, 300,000, half a million. At like, that point then, were YouTube paying? Yeah. Or was it like the partner program thing? No, 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 they account? were paying, they were okay. paying. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Cause that's, that was like the prime of vlogging then, isn't it? Yeah, that, that was like, that Casey was like the that. good money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I remember cause it was like, it felt weird, you know, cause I started YouTube. I really didn't know you can make that much money from YouTube. So my goal was like, if I make two, $3,000 a month, I can live, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I remember like first, like when I started making money, it was like the first month, it was like a hundred. Second month, it was like a thousand, then 6,000, 10, 20 up and up and up. 40 and it just kept like doubling you know yeah. it's like imagine like i just left uni and i'm making like that what much the, money what your lecturers will be making in a year yeah like i'm making yearly money in a month and it's just like 
oh that's crazy <laughs> oh yeah. this is money money you so know? you knew you're onto something then this episode is sponsored by Sodom Musk the UK's leading fragrance brand specializing in ouds and musks they have some of the longest lasting perfumes you can try and with over 20 locations you can certainly smell it for yourself and you can also check out Sodom Musk online by visiting www.sodomusk.com and checking out the wide range that they have to offer I personally use Abed Ombre but I'm sure you'll find a perfume that fits you so make sure you come down to a Sodom Musk store or check out the website using the link in the description yeah then I realized I was like this is crazy but I never really cared too much about like the money. Mm -hmm. It's like I remember the first amount of money I the first hundred thousand I had, I just bought a Ferrari. Yep. Like I just I just did it, you know. That's I just it. that was in Dubai then. That was in Dubai. I think yeah. the, literally the first hundred thousand pounds I had. Yep. I took like eighty five thousand of it, bought a Ferrari. The rest was insurance. <laughs> you know, like the rest of the money I had was the How insurance. How old were you at the time? I was twenty one. So twenty one with a Ferrari four five eight. Yeah, it was a uh, spider. Spider, or, yeah. spider, yeah, I remember. Oh, that, yeah. that was the dream. Yeah, how was that? Like that—that that must have been a huge risk for you. You know, you spent all your money essentially on a Ferrari. I think I made the money so fast. Yeah, and I was making more so yeah. fast. It didn't feel like a risk, you know. So it's like, I know the next month I have another like forty thousand paycheck coming. You get another Ferrari. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. At one point, it was like you're making a Ferrari a month. Yeah. Like at one point with the whole YouTube thing, it's like every single month I can buy a new Ferrari. And I'll make more money because I'm still buying Ferrari. So people are watching the videos like, what's going on, you know? Yeah. This is why I wanted to get you on, man. Because, you know, everyone sees YouTubers. Um, how old would you say your audience range is from? I think teenagers. You teenagers, know? you know. And, you know, they might not understand that YouTube is a full-time business, essentially. What yeah. you do, you know, you being a content creator, you being an entertainer, that is a full-time job in itself. And people don't un really understand, you know, what you, what you gain from it, essentially. Yeah. You know, you're entertaining people and you're also entertaining yourself by being able to live in a house like this have the cars that you got right now yeah and that's why i wanted to get you on because it's super interesting not a, leap, not a lot of people think that being youtube is a business uh, yeah i think especially back then they yeah. didn't yeah. nowadays people get it like yeah. you have the logan pauls the ksi's yeah, and yeah, everyone yeah. knows they're millionaires yeah. but i think the 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 thing about youtube was i think youtubers always wanted to act poor yeah like literally every single youtuber they were millionaires and they just wanted to act poor because they felt if i say i'm rich no one's going to watch me. Mm. So I think that's where I got a lot of hate because... You're flexing. I'm, but I'm making money. I'm spending money. What's yeah. wrong with that? You yeah, know, yeah, like, Of course, you're living your life. I'm living my life. So why should I... There was... I, I'm sure you've seen it. There were some YouTubers in America, like mm. millionaire gamers, which they had crazy car collections and they were hiding it. Yeah. And they got exposed for it or something. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But yeah. why should I hide how I live? Like, should why? Because yeah. I'm going to get hated? All right, that's me. Yeah. Because what happens if, if you don't hide it, you're going to get exposed and oh my God. It's like, I'd rather get hated every day than suddenly one day I'm an angel and the next day I'm a devil, you know? Yeah, that, course, that's yeah. just me. So I think that's the thing. YouTubers were hiding the money they were making just because they felt like the the less people know, the more they'll support me. Like, I'll be honest with, me, with you. Like, if I drop merch, I will not sell like someone that has the same subscribers as me. Because people say, well, he's got money. Why should I support him? Do you think that would happen, yeah? It's happened. Is it? I've seen numbers from how much I sell merch yeah. to someone with half my subscribers. And they sell more merch. They sell better. Is it? I thought Because it people say, well, Mo's got money. But you've got a, like, a good good fan base. like. I do, but also a lot of them, will, like a lot of people, why do they buy merch? It's like, especially a few years ago, it was like, oh, this is my favorite YouTuber. He's making videos mm. and I want to support him to make more money. But with Mo, he's got a Ferrari. Why does he need more money? You know, yeah. so it's like they, and I saw that a lot, not to say that people weren't buying my merch. They were, but as in like percentage wise, you yeah, know, of course, yeah, I get what you're saying, like yeah. someone with 5 million subscribers and I had 5 million yeah. would sell like triple me. Yeah. We're both making money, but he would be making considerably more, more yeah. just because people would be like, oh, like, he needs it. <laughs> they don't need it. They don't need it. Trust me. We know Brokey. the money. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, you know. Yeah. But it happens. Like Even right now, if you see a, a struggling YouTuber, you're going to feel like, oh, let me donate some money. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah a lot, I mean, a lot of these guys have, you know, Patreons and stuff like that. Merch, funny, lit through the channel, etc. Yeah. And they do that whole sort of thing. But, you know, you've just got Mo out here. got two Rolls Royce Goyce behind him. Lambo behind me. In fact, is this Lana's Lambo? Yeah, from this when? is Lana's Lamborghini, yeah. So talk to me about that story because rem I remember you saying on your podcast yeah. that Lana came here a year before you had come here. Yeah, but this is way back, by the way. 
I think a lot of people don't realize like off YouTube and on YouTube there can be different things. You know, people just try and like mm. evaluate your entire life. Off YouTube. Um, people to this day they're like, oh my God, daddy's money. <laughs> yeah. Where's my dad? <laughs> Where's my dad? Yeah. Show me daddy money. I'll take it happily. You know what I mean? Like, or it's like they'll they'll make up some scenario. Um, look, Lana, a lot of people like, we made a podcast about it and it's like, they're lying. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Like my sister was in real estate and we're talking real estate before the crash, like 2007, six, seven. Okay. So just, so she moved to Dubai when she was 17. Yeah. She worked in a real estate company. The company was called like, I don't know, Rufi or something. If you know, you know, um, and then after that, she started doing more work and more work. She actually opened her own real estate company. Mm -hmm. So like back then, real estate in Dubai was like, it felt like illegal money. You know, yeah. it was that crazy because like Dubai was just hot. It was upcoming. Like literally every week, there was so much real estate getting bought and sold. Like if you bought something today, tomorrow, the price is already 10% up. Yeah, it was just like the whole thing with the palm so when, when was, that first It come was out, crazy. Before. So my sister made like stupid money yeah. during that era. And then obviously the crash happened where you had like literally when the crash happened, everyone was panic selling. Nothing like, as in business, like stopped. Yeah. Everyone was like, half the people were running away because mm -hmm. they had debts they couldn't pay. So at that point, she made her money. Um, it was savings, you know. But then we're like, okay, there's no more work here. What do we do? Everyone's running away. So then we're like, you know what? Better to go back to studying. So that's when we came back to London. So but when my sister came back to Dubai again, obviously she had the money from her savings. She wanted to buy a Lamborghini. It was always her dream. Yeah. So that's how the Lamborghini happened. The Lamborghini is real estate money. <laughs> Pure real estate money. No YouTube. Yeah, we had a Lamborghini before YouTube money. So. Oh, did you? Okay. Fair yeah, so that was yeah. when I started YouTube. I think that's how I got views. So I'm throwing it back to YouTube, right? Yeah. Obviously, you know, for people who don't understand the way YouTube works, you've got your AdSense and then you've got your sponsors as well. Yeah. I want to know about the first time you got a sponsor. Um, and if you're open to say how much it was for. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, the first sponsor I made... Like, I think I've answered this question a few times, but I've probably given different answers every time. Yeah. It was a few hundred dollars. It was very low. And I remember I was happy. Like, it was the first time. And remember, like, when I started, like, I used to check my own emails. So mm -hmm. it's like the first time someone was like, hey, we're going to pay you to show an app in your video. I was like, okay. Yeah, let me do it. <laughs> Great, quick, you know? Yeah. And it's like, nowadays... Obviously, you have YouTuber friends. You can ask each other, yo, how much do you charge? How much do you charge? Course, you know? yeah. So you, you know how much to charge. But back then, I didn't know anyone. So I think I said like, I don't know, $200. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when they said yes, I was like, yeah, cashed yeah, yeah. out. And they're you probably know? thinking, yes, we, we, you know, we've made it. <laughs> Honestly, whoever was sponsoring me at the beginning, it was like the best for them. You yeah. know? Because yeah, it's cause... like, I was charging so low and I didn't know my value. Didn't understand it, yeah. I didn't, you know, it's like for me, you know, you know how I used to value it? God. I used to value it as how much one video makes. My sponsorship should be the exact same. So what your each video would make about so $200. Let's say if my video is making at that time $300, 200 Yeah. Same price as the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was a daily vlogger at the time. See, that was that was like me when I first started podcasting and I first got sponsors and I was in the same position. I was like, yes, this is wicked, you know, yeah. 300 pounds for a sponsor. But then I had no one to ask if this is right, if this is wrong, yeah. if I'm doing it right. And then, so I eventually had to come up with my own model and then, you know, started meeting other podcast people and then realizing, okay, we need to be charging a bit more. Yeah, Stuff you're like, like oh, dad, they're making that much yeah. money. <laughs> you're like, all right, team, we have a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> We're so, not charging enough. <laughs> so being a YouTuber of your skill, you know, you said you used to check your emails then now. Yeah. Do you check your emails again still? Or? No. So your team, how many people does it consist of? I think I have around 10 people that work full time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like one of them checks the emails, few editors, few guys that build stuff for the videos, you know, because mm -hmm. I have an Arabic channel too. Yeah. So I think 10 people, 10 people. Full I want to say, I've come across your Arabic videos, not that I understand it yeah. much so anyway, but it's almost got like a Mr. Beast vibe going to it. Yeah, no, definitely. It's just, it's just literally Mr. Beast, but in Arabic. Arabic yeah. So I think, obviously Mr. Beast is one of my biggest inspirations. I, I love the way he does content. I think everyone does, you know? Yeah, of course, 100%. You know, and it's funny, I put a Mr. Beast video on in front of my parents, in front of, so my parents who are in their 50s, I put it in front of my little sister who's uh, who was under 20 at the time, myself. Every single person in that room was watching the video throughout the whole thing. Yeah. I was thinking, this is how that guy gets into audience retention because he's got a video that appeals to every single age group. Yeah, I think with Mr. Beast, I think he showed everyone that 
like you know how everyone used to think all right tv netflix and then you have your little youtubers yeah i think he just like flipped it the whole thing yeah he just showed like listen youtube is bigger than tv bigger than netflix yeah we can do it all on this platform you know yeah. so because you're building personalities yeah you're, personalities. you're and you're showing that you don't need an entire production yeah to do these things like obviously mr beast has a production yeah, now yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> but as in like it's possible to start from a very small beginning course, and yeah. just build your way up so I, I i love the mr beast concept and i love the fact that i think he was the only guy that really took all the money he made and just put it put on it the video video yeah and that's i think a big mistake a lot of youtubers did even myself mm. i think if i going back at it if i stopped buying cars and i actually put like money into like ideas yeah I think I could have like done a lot more maybe. So do you regret buying that first Ferrari? No. No, not at all. No, not at all. No. <laughs> I loved every But moment. then you could say at the same time, you know, you buying the cars or spending money is kind of, you know, indirectly investing into your YouTube channel because now you could get to make content with the Ferrari. Which yeah. people think gonna love it's gonna bring more subscribers, bring more money essentially. It's gonna bring a whole lot more things than, you know. Yeah, exactly. No, no. The first Ferrari was definitely the best investment actually. Like that was genuinely a great investment for the channel. Maybe like the fourth or fifth car were unnecessary. You yeah. know, I think. What would you say the biggest waste of money was for you? The biggest waste of money. Uh, you know what? The thing about me is, I really don't waste money. Like people see me, like this guy is just living a crazy lavish style, like lifestyle. I don't waste money. Like the thing about me is, it sounds crazy, but most of the time, if I'm going out, I don't really go anywhere fancy. Like if you see me in Nusret. A friend of mine's invited me there. Like, I don't really go. Mm -hmm. um, if you see me in a fancy restaurant that costs thousands, most times someone's invited me there. Like, apart from that, I don't care to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to spend a few thousand on food. Mm. I don't. You know, it's not my thing. Like, if I'm there, someone else is paying for it. What <laughs> most is it of the time. What is it about it that doesn't want you to spend that money? Is it just because you think that's too much money for dinner because you, you can really, clearly afford I can pay thing. for it but it's like number one most of the times I don't like fancy places anyways mm. I want to eat quick yeah. like I don't want to sit around for like two hours waiting for yeah, yeah. something to cook in front of me you know like in and out. I want to be in and out like I'm very like I have ADHD like I just want to move you know yeah. so I think that's the thing but obviously if a friend of mine invites me I want to go meet friends and blah blah but if it's up to me and it's my plan we're going somewhere that's quick yeah let's just wait for this was that a helicopter this time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Legit, everyone's flying over today. Guys, we got some helicopters <laughs> landing. You know, my neighbors are billionaires, by the way. Is it? Yeah. Like, they don't B even B live B here. Billionaire B. Actual billionaires. Bro. Like, the, my neighbor doesn't live here. This is just one of his houses. Oh, so where did they actually live? Not even in Dubai or? No, just in another city. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy shit. I've never seen it myself. <laughs> Have you not? So, so how do you know the billionaires? Because I asked the guy that works for him. Oh, gosh. They own, like crazy amount of company i think they oil companies and stuff so i'm yeah. still waiting to meet my own neighbor i've been here for two years <laughs> you've only been here for two years where were you living before this um uh, another house in this area oh okay fair enough yeah so you just keep switching yeah i keep switching do, you, do they get bigger and bigger or no same uh, same sort of size yeah, same so size. Then why do you move just for the vlogs <laughs> i feel like people get bored if they well, see just so you can make the video my new house <laughs> there we go <laughs> literally my new house i think people get excited to see something new you know the same thing about cars yeah even if i have a bugatti right now and just a a helicopter. Yo, guys, can you land your helicopter? I think they're looking for more. Yeah, they're like, yo, where's the pink Rolls Royce? Yeah, I think I think people get bored no matter what you have. Like, even if you have a Bugatti now, in two months your audience are gonna be bored of it. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's the best of the best of the best. People get bored. You know. Yeah. Even Andrew Tate, he had a Bugatti. It was cool. The whole what color is your Bugatti? But at the end, you that's it. People, you know, would, isn't it? He has a Bugatti. Unless he buys another Bugatti, yeah. you don't care. Yeah, which obviously you can't right now. Yeah. Let's talk about Andrew Tate because obviously you've done a podcast with him. Yeah. Yeah. It was a sick podcast as well, so I'll rate you for that one. Yeah. What was it like? What do you think of him? This episode is sponsored by Fireway Pizza, the fastest growing pizza company in the UK. With over 100 locations, you definitely have a store near you. The founder of Fireway was on the show not too long ago, and you can get a slice of the action by using the discount code CEOCAST at fireway.co.uk. Once again, use the discount code CEOCAST at fireway.co.uk. Um, to be honest, I, I was speaking with Andrew way before he was even famous, to be honest. Oh, is it? So... I think I DM'd him when he was about 200,000 followers. Yeah. So I think I first came across a video 
his he he made a video with his Bugatti with another YouTuber, but this was before he blew up on TikTok. So me being a car guy, I just wanted to film the car. Yeah. Like I didn't know who Andrew Tate is, but yeah. I like the car. the car. Yeah. I was like, seems like an interesting guy. Was but it the one with Mike Thurston where the actual original? Exactly. Oh, what colors your Bugatti come from? Exactly. Yeah. So that was like. I don't know if it was that or something. Yeah, around that time or before he had all that TikTok success. And so I think I'd messaged him back then. So a few months ago when he came to Dubai, but obviously I, I lost contact with him because his Instagram were taken away. Yeah. So I met him back in Dubai when Nelk Boys were here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the Nelk Boys were at his house. Yeah. One of them told me, come, because we're going to go out. Um, so I just connected with him there again. But then before I made the podcast, like I saw him for like a month or two. Mm-hmm. So the honest truth is my sister hated him. Oh, know? is it? Yeah. Yeah, my sister hated him. So even though I knew him, I didn't really make any content with him. I, I took him to a Halloween party. Um, so we were, we were hanging out, but yeah. I just wasn't vlogging anything just because I was like, you know what? My sister hates him. Respect for her sort of thing. Respect it. Like, <laughs> you know, at least let me choose my family once in a situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think over time, she kind of watched more of his content. She got him. Look, from what I know from the guy... Um, Look, I only know what I saw, right? He came to my house. What I like about him, he's definitely a guy that sticks to his word. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I've seen this like time and time again. Not about me. Like I met celebrities, which I hate. Yeah. You know, they're just like all flaky and weird and they lie a lot. But with him, like he's very much too, like he sticks to his word. And I think that's why he got canceled. Like even you saw the first time when you got cancelled, like most people mm-hmm. would come out like, "I'm so sorry." Yeah, he was just like, <laughs> "I'm so sorry, yeah. I made a mistake." Andrew Tate was like, "Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it catch is." Catch me on Rumble. Yeah, catch me on Rumble. <laughs> I'm cancelled. I'm leaving every platform. I'm yeah. going on. Rumble. So that's definitely something interesting. <laughs> yeah, like I would not do that. Like no, 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 if that's the whole difficult. world like cancels me, I will sit down. I am so sorry. My actions were mistaken, but I I, I think he's also shown a lot of people you don't have to be apologetic like that's you you know yeah so similar to what i was saying when i made content with like cars and stuff like i didn't feel like i had to act a certain way like i like cars i like spending my money on cars and living a cool lifestyle so i think nowadays it's popular and people are actually saying like oh this is nice like yeah just be who you are so in that sense i like what he did you know now, obviously, there's a whole nother, the drama side of things. I the, mean, currently, as we're recording, let's just let people know he's currently in prison. So whether yeah. he's out or not, is a, we don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. Have you messaged him? Uh, well, I messaged him. Do you know what's funny? I was going to do um, a podcast with Tristan on the 30th of December. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they flew back to Romania. Yeah. And then I asked Tam. Tam said they're coming back because he was meant to have a yacht party yeah. on New Year's Eve. Uh, Tate even said, come, like, New Year's Eve, you know, we'll keep updated with the plans, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, long story short. So I messaged him on Thursday, the 27th or something like that of December, wherever it was. And usually Andrew replies instantly, yeah? Yeah. Um, But there was no reply. And then when the news article came out, it said he'd been arrested that morning when I had messaged him. So, yeah, long story short, I haven't messaged him since now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. me neither. I, I don't know what to say. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing or what he's Oh, yeah. One, one thing about Andrew Tate is this is shocking, you know? Like, you know how most people say, talk to my assistant? Like, Andrew Tate is his own manager, yeah. his own assistant, his own team. Like, that's it. Like, if yeah. you want Andrew Tate on a podcast, you message Andrew Tate. Yeah, I remember when I emailed him, I got a reply there and then he was just like, WhatsApp me, G. I was like, all right, sick. <laughs> it's all right. What's up, G? Yeah. What's up, G? Got you, G? Like, yeah, guys, everything that. is top G, you know? <laughs> That's crazy. Guy. Honestly, guys, like, the thing about him is, like, he's very resp- I don't know how he does it. If he has, like, 10 lookalikes that, like, WhatsApp reply yeah, or something. Probably. probably but he is, like, if he's online on WhatsApp, he's going to reply to you on WhatsApp. Yeah, it's, it's done. 100%, yeah. He's crazy. I mean, he's got a different level of influence, but you've also got influence as well, yeah? Yeah. And you always see, you know, YouTubers like k and Logan Paul, they teamed up and they made something like Prime. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing something like that? You know, creating, like, a product for, not necessarily just for your followers, but using your influence and your network to your advantage and coming out of a massive product or yeah. something along them lines. Yeah, no, I want a product that definitely this year. That's why like, I took a step back from just making tons of content. Um, I definitely want to now, like you said, make the products. I think that's the way you elevate. Make products, do events, get into boxing or whatever yeah. it is. Because um, I realized at one point, it's just like, if you're just going to sit there and make video every single day, that's it. You're just going to be in the same place. So this year, definitely, that's stuff I want to look into. I don't know what exactly yet, 
Uh, but I like what Logan and KSI did, definitely. They yeah. actually sent me the new Prime Energy drink. You want to try it? Oh, they got one, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God damn, I think I'm the first off. person in Dubai with it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll try it after this podcast. I saw um, a shop in the UK that had it. I don't know if it was fake. Or 100 it was pounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you saw that one, yeah? yeah? I was like, is this guy? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't know if that was legit or not, but he had it. We got your cat joining on, on, on the podcast. Yeah. Um, you had a milkshake bar as well, am I right? Yeah. So, I definitely, I've always tried doing new things. I, I like experimenting. So, I made, we, we had like a coffee shop. Yeah, that didn't go well. No? Honestly, no. Um, Why not? No, not in like a money sense, but it was so time consuming. What was it called again? It was called Fun and Shakes. That's the one. Yeah, Yeah, so it was so time consuming just because at the time I was like, okay, I want to do something different. Um, let me let me open a shop. <laughs> we got the cat walking on the Lamborghini. <laughs> hey, get off my Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, made a coffee shop. It was okay because you have a bunch of people that are your fans coming. They're trying the milkshakes. They love it. But the money you're making compared to the headache of it. Mm. And that's where you realize like, damn, mm. these people that made successful businesses and stuff like they respect really to them and stuff, yeah. respect to them because it's like you have daily problems. Like I thought, you know what? I'm famous. I'll just open a place. It's going to run itself. Yeah. No, <laughs> it does not run itself. Complete opposite. It's a complete opposite. Like one day you have like a burst in a pipe. Yeah. And everyone there just has no idea what to do. Like everyone in your business, like, sir, sir, what? All right. I'm now I'm a plumber. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's see, you know, let's, put let's the, go. Let's we've go. Put, we've got a YouTube video on how to fix this. <laughs> exactly. You know, like ah, I'm getting calls left and right. And center. So I think that was definitely a learning curve. Like, okay, if I ever do want to do a side business, don't try and always handle everything yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one bad thing about me. Like I always try and do it myself. So, I think that's something I'm always working on nowadays. It's like, have a team. You can't do everything yourself. Like, have a team. You need a manager. You need someone handling a side business. So, I think that's where I went wrong. So, when you were launching it, the antif- anticipation of it, how did you think it was going to go? You thought it was going to be so successful? Yeah. Walk in the park sort of thing? Exactly. I, the thing is, it was. So, when we launched, like, I remember it was crazy. Like, obviously, you tell your fans to come. Everyone's coming. And I'm like, at the time still kind of like it was like i was the biggest vlogger in dubai so tons of people came the problem only came when there was problems like mm. physically in the business yeah, yeah. you know like for example a pipe bursts or for example and to be honest our main problem came during corona so corona that's when i was like listen everyone's closing stores mm-hmm. all right everyone closes the store all right the rule changes. You can keep your store open until four o'clock. All right, everyone back in work, you know? So Yeah, just different rules. As in on. like the rules were changing so much at the time and I'm trying to do YouTube. So I'm not up to date with every day like, hey, okay, guys, go back to work. All right, today you guys are off. So it just became so much of a headache in that sense. It wasn't really about the money because the shop wasn't huge. It's not like I had expenses to pay really. It was like a tiny shop. Where was it? Um, it was in Jumeirah, you know? Oh, it was in Jumeirah, okay, yeah. So... It wasn't like I was losing money or it's just I wasn't making enough to actually focus that much energy on it. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. The, the head, like you said, it was headache, right? Yeah. And for the money you're trying to decide, like, feel sort of worth it sort of thing. Was it more headache than YouTube? Like, what I'm trying to say is, did you compare it to the money in the headache of YouTube versus the money in the headache of that and think YouTube is paying? Exactly. And, and I realized, like, yeah, I compared it to YouTube. Let's say on YouTube, if I'm making a hundred thousand with ten percent energy, yeah. and here I'm making one thousand with ninety percent energy, it just doesn't make sense. But and also, I didn't. I realized like there's no point of me handling one shop. Like if this is ever gonna actually make real money, it's when you have like ten shops or a hundred yeah, franchises shops, and all that franchises stuff. and stuff like that. So I said, listen, it's either I'm gonna close it down for now, restructure it. Kind of how Mr. Beast did it now. Like, just he's basically just always online, you know, yeah. in a way where it can grow. There's no point in me, even if my shop does fantastic, always full. If I have one location, I'm not really going to make wow money, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like Mr. Beast Beggar, what he done initially, now that he's got an actual physical store, but I mean, I'm sure you know at first yeah. it was all Uber Eats and from all these kitchens. Yeah, he and gets stuff. to go everywhere. That's yeah. the thing. Like, he really scaled his business like Massively. crazy. Absolutely. Crazy levels. Um, you know, we're vlogging. I was talking about this with someone else here. Do you think it's got an age limit on it? As in, do you think you would get to a certain age and you think, I'm not in it for vlogging anymore. It's not me. Yeah, look, the thing is, I'm 27 now as well. So it's like, nowadays, it's, it's like you have like the speeds, you know, speed. Yeah. And this guy's like 
on drugs the whole time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You can't like, compete with them. There's no way I can be like that much energy. There's like if I walk outside and I start yelling, yeah, I'm gonna feel weird about it. Like I don't know how this guy's like pure. He's definitely on drugs at all times. You know, there's no way. Like, there's literally drugs in built in the system. But yeah, that's the thing. I feel like, obviously, it just depends on your personality. Yeah. Some people can be energetic at 30, 30. For me, especially, I think it's always like, you're going to change, you know? Mm. I don't think in 10 years, you're going to see speed doing the same things he does now. You never know with him. I, I mean, that guy, he's a... Uh, woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's yeah, that's true. the thing. I think definitely there's like an age limit. Not as in like... I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think you yourself, you're going to get tired of it, you know? Yeah. And the reason why I asked is because I was comparing it. My mate, he's, he does vlogs and um, I'm doing obviously podcasts. Yeah. And I said to him, in my opinion, I feel like vlogs has an age limit on it because you'll get to a certain age, just to say 35 and you think, oh, I've got family and kids now, I can't be vlogging like that. Yeah. Whereas podcasts, you can keep to the day you die, essentially, right? Because you can keep elevating, growing with it, etc. So then I was question in my head, oh, is it maybe is that the reason why Mo has made a podcast? Started doing or? podcasts? Yeah. <laughs> neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you have rich neighbors, you know, just taking out the Lambo. Yeah. Um, no, th- look, I think I think everything has its own wave. Even podcasts. I, I don't think We've pod- got your other millionaire neighbor this time. Another neighbor, you know? <laughs> my neighbors are crazy. Yeah. Uh, I think everything has its own wave. Like right now, I think it's the podcast wave. But I don't think podcasts are going to be the same as they are now mm. in five years. Um, I definitely think there's going to be someone doing something that's crazier. Yeah. You know, um, you've already seen it. A bunch of podcasts are like, you have to be eating spicy chilies while doing the podcast. Yeah, you know? yeah I've seen that, yeah. So I think everything has its own time frame, you know. Um so I think next few years, podcasts, you're going to have to be like, I don't know, hanging off a building while doing a podcast. Everyone's starting a podcast now. Yeah, now, now everyone's doing a podcast. So right now, for the next year, podcasts are going to be cool. Yeah. But then we'll see who Next actually year, you're going to see like, this chair is going to be hanging off a building <laughs> while I ask, you know, crazy questions, questions <laughs> with a lie detector machine yeah. attached to my <laughs> veins or something. So Who's going to be the first person to do a podcast on top of Burj Khalifa? Exactly. We you should know? do that. I think that would be definitely like the prince of Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> I so, yeah. mean, <laughs> with those type of things, it's like first come, first serve access, you yeah. know? Let's throw it back to brand deals for a second, right? Yeah. Like we said in the beginning, your early brand deals, you're looking at roughly about $200, $300 yeah. pounds per, per video. What does it look like now? This episode is sponsored by Chaiwala. If you don't already know, Chaiwala specializes in garlic chai and Indian street food. With over 70 locations, six in Canada, and a new brand new store in Dubai, chances are you definitely have a store near you. They have a wide variety of food and snacks on the menu, so chances are you'll definitely have something that fits your taste buds. My personal favorite, definitely the Desi breakfast and a nice garlic chai to go alongside it. So make sure you come down to Chaiwala, try the Indian street food, and grab yourself a nice warm garlic chai to enjoy this episode of CEO Cost. Ah, uh, brand deals now, look. I'll tell you one thing. When NFTs were a thing, oh, I felt God. like I was printing money. Yeah. Like literally, it was like I was printing money. It was like every single day, like just NFT money was coming in. Like, I, like it was the first time I was saying no to like big money. It's like, listen, I'm doing too many NFT. I can't, you know. Yeah. So nowadays, I've kind of changed it. Um, like I said, you you grow and you learn. Like, I realized like, you know what? The next move is to make like brands like this prime and stuff so brand deals look brand deals my biggest brand deals were probably yearly deals mm-hmm. you know um because it's really hard to answer that question like how much are you getting paid well if i say a million that million could be for 20 posts it's a one-year deal oh, okay, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean all the um, stuff, yeah. but definitely in terms of brand deals i've made millions yeah I just don't know like how many posts i did for it you probably do more on instagram now i've seen I think, yeah i do a lot on instagram um yeah brand deals is a hard one i think it just depends on season like guys youtube is a business so when other businesses are doing well they want youtubers to promote them when they're they, when they don't have money they don't pay you um so i think definitely like just before christmas is like when you get the brand deals okay like nowadays brand deals definitely like they're good I don't um, know. Yeah, I remember Christmas last year because the same with AdSense, right? You know, they push a whole lot of money into AdSense, you know, because the Christmas season is yeah. coming up. I remember last year, December, alone, I had made what the whole year had made. How much? It was, oh, it was, it was nothing big. It was, I <laughs> how think much? It was grand. Okay. And that's what I, no, you know, it was probably 
I made more in the year, but it was spread out over the months. But that was like one month where it was like four times the rest in of the month. In one month you made seven. Okay. Yeah. But that was just a YouTube attempts. Okay. And then the rest of it was just brand deals and stuff like that. That's that's good though. It was good, but then that's, your that really opened my eyes as to, you know, what was going on. At like, the time it was at like twenty five thousand subscribers, if that. Um and that's what it made. And I was like, this is sick. Guys, do the math. Twenty five thousand subscribers. Thousand in a month. Oh, he's look. He's gonna reveal my salary right now. <laughs> I I don't know, guys. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's good money. Yeah, no fair play. Um, but it's not roller money. We gotta Yo, get roller much, money. I actually have a question. How much did the Andrew Tate podcast make? <laughs> All together, it's obviously it's still you know ongoing stuff. Yeah, because no, until now. For some reason, my podcast is still monetized. Like they haven't, the algorithm hasn't come after my podcast, so it's still the exact same thing. I know a lot of people. There's been unmonetized, taken down. Nope, boys, for example, their one's gone. Yeah, my one. As of today, you're speaking. You want to check on camera right now? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's check it. <laughs> Guys, how much money did we make with one video? Guys, this is we're we're literally live on camera checking. Live how on much camera you made. right now. Sort by most viewed. Let's look at this. I'm gonna guess thirty k. Wait, how much views does that have? Makes you more. Three point one mil. Forty k. Thirty. Forty thousand. No. Okay. Since uh, process in the last two days. Since published. Pounds. Pounds for one video. That's just YouTube AdSense. That yeah, that's just YouTube AdSense. Yeah. But I mean, how else would you make money with that? Sponsors. You put sponsors on that? Yeah. Of course. Oh. You know, and you, uh, you know, all you gotta do is holler a company, yo, and you take, yeah, yeah. ten yeah. grand, yeah, <laughs> cool, done. I, I should have done that. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, oh guys. did you not? Did you not have sponsors no. in your one? No. No. So is your is your podcast sponsored or not? No. You trying no to get it sponsored or you're not really bothered by it? I I don't really think about it too much. Like I think I just let it come. Mm, yeah, fair play. But I should. Yeah, I mean, there's always more more ways to monetize. Guys, whoever's sponsoring this podcast, email me half price. Shout out to <laughs> half, <laughs> half price. Half whatever price. he's charging you, half price. <laughs> That's what you call um, flipping out the guy with uh, 11 million subscribers or something like that, just cutting <laughs> cutting the price in half. Cutting the price in half. <laughs> Shorting the whole market and like. Yeah, exactly. That's a that's a good business strategy. No, it's crazy. How many episodes have you done in your podcast now? I think I've done like five episodes. I can't lie, my podcast episodes so far for a new channel, they've been crazy. But just because I have <laughs> the main yeah, channel, I mean, you know? the first I think the first episode you done was with Six Nine, right? Yeah, one of the first episodes was Six Nine, Liver King. Andrew Tate. You done Liver King as well? Yeah. yeah. Like everyone on my count everyone on my podcast has been cancelled. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Liver King, we did the podcast. He got exposed for steroids. Yep. Andrew Tate, Went he's prison. in jail now. I don't know what it is about my podcast. I am not CIA. I am not FBI. Yo, I know you invited me to come on your podcast. I might have to be a bit cautious now. I'm not gonna lie. Listen, next <laughs> podcast, I don't know who it is at this point because no one wants to come on my podcast right now. <laughs> I did Tam Khan. His Twitter got banned or his TikTok got banned. Oh no way! Was that after the podcast? I'm just saying, Mo, whoever's is watching it? my podcast is definitely <laughs> there's some conspiracy going on there's, here right there's now. There's something with my podcast. It's not good luck right now. <laughs> I'll jump on it. We'll see what happens. It yeah. will put me to the test. Exactly. I'll be the decider of that one. But what else for business, man? What's your future plans? Look, future plans. There's only one plan I have right now. Mm. Make a lot of money. Honestly, like that's literally my only goal right now is to make stupid money. Because I realize, like, let's be real. Why is everyone doing what they're doing? You know, okay, there's enjoyment, but the end goal, I think, is just financial freedom. You know, and I think that's one thing even Andrew Tate said a lot. It's just like, I want to just be free. I don't want to have to think about working or think about if i don't do this then i have to do this like i just want stupid money to the point where it's like if i want to do it i don't have to ask anyone mm -hmm. if i want to fly all my friends out with a private jet all right i have the money for it so i think the end goal is just have enough money to be free like i'm not saying money is important to me i just want the money to spend it yeah it's not that i care to be rich it's just i don't want to have to answer questions anymore so that's my main goal right now is just to make stupid money do you like treating people around you who are like close to you and stuff for example whether it's you know family aside yeah obviously friends. you'd buy your mom and your sister anything they want right yeah but like friends would you happily pay for their dinner etc take them yeah. out on holidays that, the, th the thing is like i think nowadays that's what keeps me more happy just being able to like because i think you reach a point where it's like all right i don't get excited about money stuff anymore like i don't care about cars i don't care but when i see other people get excited that's my happiness you know so mm. so that's that's the goal like just have enough money where listen i know my friends can't afford a private jet but let's you go can, yeah let's go so I, I think that's the goal right now it's just i want to make like 
so much money to the point where I can just be free, treat the people around me nice. And even to a point, like, I've, I've said this with my friend, like, you reach a point with money, you know how people say money doesn't make you happy? It, does, it really doesn't, you know? And I think the ultimate happiness comes when you start giving back. So, like, my goal is eventually I want to, like, open schools in Africa, you know? Mm. Do things that really matter because then that's really happiness. Like, when you go and visit places where they don't have money and you see the happiness you gave them, I think that's the bigger happiness, you know? So, like, right now I was telling you before the podcast, like, I'm selling a bunch of my cars, it's good for the, like, I had my cars because of, like, work, you know, rappers come to the house, they like the cars, you make a video with them, yeah, whatever, course, yeah. content, but, like, I don't care, you know, it's like, wow, it's a Rolls Royce, oh my god, you know, people get excited about it, but mm. it's a car, Yeah, it's metal. You get over it at the end of the day. Yeah, and I, I, I hate people that, like, idolize it, like, I stand on, like, I made a video, I was standing on my Ferrari, people are upset it's a Ferrari it's not a person it's not like I'm standing on a human being it's like <laughs> I'm standing on metal it's like okay it's a Ferrari but it's it's not, it doesn't have feelings it's just a car it's your car as well it's my car yeah, so it doesn't matter. exactly people want. get upset it's like they treat it as if it's like a person it's like yeah. this is a car like I get it alright fine I'll never touch your car don't worry Yeah. but if it's my car I Do can stand want, on yeah. it I can blow it up <laughs> I want to blow up my Rolls Royce today. <laughs> yeah, that's what, uh, you know, another guy I come across on YouTube, Whistling Diesel, he does the same thing. Yeah. Just, yeah. Now, maybe I wouldn't do that yeah. just because, like, that's a waste of money. <laughs> I want to ask you a question, Mo, yeah? Speaking about happiness and everything right now, right now, are you happy? No. I, like, being completely honest, no. Why not? I think generally, like, nowadays I'm struggling to be happy. Like, I could give you the, like, oh, I'm okay. I Like, alhamdulillah. Like, I, I do, like, it's not that I'm about to be suicidal, I don't know. But, like, it's just I'm not as happy as I was before, you know? Why is that? Do you think it was the journey leading up to this point yeah. that made you happier? Now that you're here, it's like... I think that's the thing. You need to find yourself like new journeys because I think it's like the journey up to here was great doing YouTube and, you know, like building up. But I think for me, I kind of reached where I wanted to reach and I was like, okay, well, what now? Mm. So I think that's why I'm not as happy as I used to be. But that's why I sit down like sometimes, you know what? You need new goals. Like I always say this, guys, happiness is a feeling. Like whatever happy I feel, you feel the same happy. Whatever sad. So it's like Andrew Tate doesn't feel any happier than us when he's happy just because he has a Bugatti you know it's the same but I think you just need to write down a plan figure out what you enjoy to do and just set a goal and just go for it because that that journey is actually the good part you know once you reach it it's like what now yeah of course yeah so what sort of things have you set out for you to be happier um or are you still thinking about that I think I'm still thinking about it you know like I struggle I think sometimes I'm like you know what I need a relationship and a wife and kids but then sometimes I realize like I, I'm not ready for it, you know? Like, also, like, I'm not gonna... I don't think I'll make a good partner right now just because I think I'll neglect my, like, relationship and then work again. So, so I think it's just... I'm figuring it out. I just want... Right now, I just want money. That's it. I want to touch on that topic because that's why in- interesting, right? You're probably, arguably, one of the most famous people in Dubai. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, for you, it's hard for you to find a partner because you might not know if they're in it for you and your heart yeah. Or for you and everything around you. I'll say this. I think... Same with friends as well. Not just relationship, but same with friends as well. I think pretty much most things are transactional. Mm-hmm. And I'll be honest. Like, I don't think me and you would sit here unless you wanted to do a podcast with me and I wanted to do one with you. Or, you know, it's like... And I think the same works in relationships, whether we like it or not. And I know everyone says like, oh, men, we truly love women, but they just love what we have. I... I think it's the same way back. Like, if I were to meet a girl which I find ugly, I'm not going to love her, like, straight away at least, you know? Yeah. So I think that's a transaction in itself. Like, all right, some people, some girls are just naturally beautiful. Great. But I think that's what, as a guy, would take. So I think there's still transaction. Now they say, guys, we love women no matter what. No. Like, right now, I'm going to be honest. If I see a very ugly girl, in my opinion, I'm not going to go up to her and say, I love you. I, yeah, I like I don't yeah. you know you need to be beautiful for me to have that initial attraction you yeah. know so I think everything is transactional to a point I think you just need to understand it and just not be too sad about it because I think sometimes you'll sit there and like oh fuck I'll never know if someone truly loves me or you know mm. but why is it that when me and you meet Cristiano Ronaldo we're so happy to see him 
Yeah. But then when we meet the guy cleaning the street, we're not excited about it, you know? Like, well, okay, it's not that we're going to be bad to him, but we meet Ronaldo, we're, we love him. Yeah, I mean, like someone else we were talking about in this podcast was saying this, you know, status, essentially, yeah. right? And I think I think it goes both ways. So I think for people like that sit there and say, oh, I'm rich and I don't know if they love me. Well, you don't love them back for no reason. You know, yeah. it's not that you love the girl you're with for absolutely no reason. It's either she's beautiful or she puts up with your nonsense. Like, trust me, everything is transactional. Or she was that girl that was with you before you had the money. So she is a ride or die. And that alone is like, a proven thing that they had to prove to you over time so i think no matter what like yeah we are just as bad as girls like in a sense like we're not like we're not gonna go like i'm sure right now are you in a relationship no, i don't know no. so if you see an ugly girl yeah you're not gonna approach her and say i love you no 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 cool. <laughs> exactly no, no, you no. know so i think for us to say oh but we're never gonna find the love of our life well maybe that ugly girl would actually love you yeah i'm just trying to think of it because like, being in a position i'm not saying i'm in a, the best position ever yeah but yeah. sometimes when people, you know, interact with me and stuff, you do ask yourself whether they're interacting with you for you or because of what you've got around you, right? So yeah, I'm just trying I, to imagine I think what you I being... think of it as, you know, like I, I say to myself this, all right, let's say I see a beautiful girl right now. Yeah. And she's whatever, like 24, 25. At that point, if she's single, you know, and she's going to go for me, it's either she's a girl that, want something back i mean why would she be single until that age there has to be something right if she's beautiful and looks great and is funny and there has to be a reason she's single right because other than that she would have been in love she would have been with someone been in yeah. love so at that point of course it's going to be some sort of transactional or she was in another relationship and broke up great maybe you got lucky maybe she was with a very bad partner but i think it's just very naive to think that me as a mo approaching a girl that's so beautiful and so amazing in every way that they're not going to look for something back you know mm. and that's why i think people always say if you're in a relationship like even if you're with your partner stay in shape stay good looking because at one point you're even your own partner is going to get bored if you like let's say if you meet a girl and she's beautiful and in two years she becomes obese you're going to look at it and say ah like i do love you but like get to the gym get to the gym you know like get to the gym you need to it's like i don't want like it's not a bad thing to say that i want my wife to be in shape like okay if she has a syndrome where she's gaining weight all right i get it but if you can eat good and go to the gym and keep yourself in some sort of shape like who wants to be with someone that's 700 pounds yeah like that makes sense mm. do uh, you what do mind I think that's the thing and I think the world has become so soft you you start like even now I'm trying to answer these questions I'm like what are people going to think of me but it's true and I think you just got to say it how it is you have to say it how it is like in your opinion everyone sees the world in a different way ideally like alright there might be someone out there but I am not into obese people yeah of course yeah I would not I'd preferably pick someone that looks beautiful in my opinion now if that person has some sort of trait that I love alright great but yeah, let's be honest. Like, everyone wants someone beautiful. Everyone wants someone funny, successful. But I think we get the person based on who we are, you know? Mm. Ronaldo can pick supermodels and funny and stuff but because of where he is, you know? Yeah. So I think everything's transactional. If you sit there and be sad about it, you're just naive and stupid. If I sit there and say, oh, they're only coming with me because I'm Mo and I have a Rolls Royce. Well... That's literally all I show anyways. <laughs> so it's like, I can't say, hey, look at me. I have a Rolls Royce. Come be my friend. And then when they're with yeah, me yeah. for the Rolls Royce, I'm like, ah. Oh, yeah, you can't. You can't. She's it's such on a you gold digger, day, yeah. man. Yeah, it's on you at the end of the day. It's like, all right, if I want a good girlfriend, let me take a Toyota outside. Uh, it makes sense why you're selling the cars. Uh, exactly. Uh, I'm selling the cars to find my real love. <laughs> but I think, yeah, if you want like a girl that knows you for you, I'll go to another country where maybe I don't have viewers. I'll drive a Toyota around and try and approach women. And in that case, most of them are probably going to say no. Mm. The ones I want anyways, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the ones that I find like, oh, super attractive or super beautiful and successful. So it is what it is. It's going to be hard for a person like you. Yeah. Before we end the podcast, we got any questions from the audience on the side? Would you buy a Bugatti? Yeah. No, yeah. That, that's, the, that's the next car. Which one? Chiron, Veyron? I, I like the Veyron. I don't know why. Like I actually genuinely like the Veyron, but I think now I think it's more timeless than Chiron. 
<laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, maybe because that was the car that we grew up to. Yeah. You know? I think nowadays kids will all love the Chiron. Chiron, yeah. They might not have seen the Veyron. I don't know. Let's see. It depends on the bank account, what I buy. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Veyron or love? No, nah, love. Love? I think love, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Love over Bugatti. It has to be. You know, Bugatti's <laughs> cheap, man. I'll, Give I'll, me more money, maybe I'll put love to the side. I'm going to ask you one last question, Mo, yeah, before I let you go. Um, you still live with your mom and your sister, right? So, actually, literally recently, like a month ago, I got my own apartment. Okay, but yeah. I still live in between both. How comes, like, for, you for you know, X amount of years, how comes you're still living with them? You could have easily, you know, thought, I've got the money, let me get my own place, yeah, uh, et cetera, stuff like that. I think... Because a lot of people do do that, that's why I ask it. I think for me, it's just like, I was, I was working, I am very close to my family, and for me, I'm not a party guy. I don't care about partying, I don't care about like going out with women that much so for me it was just like all right if i do find a partner like mm. one girl which i want to settle down with all right i'll move out with her but yeah. i don't i didn't see a reason to move out i don't enjoy partying i don't enjoy going out i think it's a waste of time i don't like that lifestyle of i'm out i'm partying look at me mm. it's not me <laughs> mo i want to thank you very much for coming thank on you CEO so much for having me and sharing your knowledge and everything with the audience as well if you've got a message for anyone who wants to be a vlogger right now what would you say uh listen just if you really want to do something, and I know this sounds sad, you wouldn't need my advice. Because the ones that are actually going to make it, they're not going to sit down and watch this video and listen to my advice. They're just going to do it. So if you're someone watching this, if you want to be a doctor, stop watching how to be a doctor. Like, just go do it. You know what I mean? Because um, most of the times, and I'll be honest with the sad part, the kids that think they need the most information and just go and watch 100 videos, most times those kids don't make it. Mm. it's the sad truth you're too busy <laughs> but if you do kid. end up being one of those kids go and do it just listen to this 10 seconds go and do it stop watching 100 videos on how to do it just start <laughs> <laughs> Mo I want to appreciate you for your time and appreciate me having you at your lovely home yeah thank you my we'll catch up soon 100% go out for dinner all subscribe that guys let's get him to a million subscribers that's, that's the last message for today a million subscribers yeah yeah awesome. no, uh, let's do it let's do it I'm excited <laughs> for that one let's go <laughs> Mo I'll catch you soon Allah, thank you bro. cheers bro nice lovely